CME Info's continuing education and board certification programs bring the conference to you. The following is a video sample from the Department of Medicine, Brigham and Women's Hospital, and the Department of Continuing Education, Harvard Medical School. This excerpt is from the Brigham Pulmonary Medicine Board Review. The lecture is presented by course director, Dr. Christopher Fanta, and is titled, Pulmonary Pearls. First is a 65-year-old man who presents with progressive exertional dyspnea over four weeks. He has a non-productive cough, no chest pain, no fever, chills, no hemoptysis. He has a history of long-term cigarette smoking pack a day for 40 years. He's had weight loss of about 20 pounds. He has no orthopnea, no PND, no symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux. He has no trouble swallowing to suggest aspiration. He's afebrile, mildly tachypnic. He's breathing about 20 times per minute. And his examination was striking for inspiratory crackles on auscultation on the right side, none on the left. Chest exam, uh, cardiovascular exam was normal. Here's his chest x-ray. What do you think? Um, abnormal on the right, not so much on the left. I think this is a unilateral abnormality, fairly widespread, no areas of consolidation, linear abnormalities, diffuse unilateral lung disease. That's what I'd like us to think about. Here's his CAT scan, confirming on this slice Good-looking uh, left lung, and on the right side, linear opacities. Perhaps these are septal lines, thickened bronchial walls. What, what are we thinking about in terms of the differential diagnosis in this patient? What's most likely? Atypical pneumonia, lymphangitic carcinomatosis, aspiration pneumonia, unilateral pulmonary edema, pulmonary thromboembolism. And I think, uh, given the history, uh, I would go with lymphangitic carcinomatosis. The X-ray and CAT scan are rather typical with those uh, linear shadows, the septal thickening. Uh, and the history really argued against unilateral edema, aspiration, et cetera, the alternative potential choices. And here's our pearl. As someone reviewed a large number of cases of diffuse unilateral lung disease, and 90% were due to one of these five etiologies. So it's a useful list to keep in your mind. Lymphangitic cancer, uh, pneumonia, unilateral pneumonia, unilateral pulmonary edema, aspiration, some of the choices that didn't fit with the history, but choices for this case, and radiation injury uh, with the unilateral radiation, uh, uh, unilateral radiation pneumonitis. Here's a patient with unilateral disease uh, but it looks very different. There's a haziness to this left lung. The patient has a tracheostomy. And I would suggest, let's look at this. It's particularly opaque at the base, less so, less so, less so as we go cephalad, maybe even, it's hard to know, is this a rib or a, a meniscus here, suggesting pleural effusion. If this patient is lying supine, we should be thinking about layering of a unilateral left-sided pleural effusion, giving this appearance in a supine patient who cannot sit upright and allow the fluid to descend to the lung base. Another related pearl, I think, in this unilateral hazy opacity with a gradient to the opacity from base to apex, think pleural effusion, layering posteriorly, and the image taken on FOSS top quality board certification reviews and continuing education programs, guaranteed. For more information about this self-study activity, go to www.cmeinfo.com slash 768V or call us at 1-800-284-8433.